Hello, travelers. This is Genevieve with Belladonna Moonbeams. How are y'all doing today? Well, it's the full moon on August 3rd, 2020. <clears throat> and full moons are really awesome days. There's a lot of magic in the air. There's a lot of things going on. It's a good day to have a ceremony. I'm still recovering from my back. I'm just about better. I've, I've got to say that. But um, I'm also taking a class online, so that's probably not happening. Um, right now, the full moon is in Aquarius. And what does that mean? Well, when the full moon is in Aquarius, it's time to deepen our connections with others. It might be a family member. It might be a friend. It might be your business partner. But it's time to deepen those connections. Reach out and call someone, you know? Um, I saw my daughter on Saturday and a friend and another friend. And I do feel like all those connections were deepened. And no, the full moon wasn't on the second, which was, I mean, on the first, which was um, Saturday. But I do somehow feel like those connections are deepening. Um, and they're just melding better. Um, now, this full moon is called the Sturgeon Moon. Um, and the reason for that is that in the Great Lakes, where, okay, the Algonquin Indians, A-L-G-O-N-Q-U-I-N, Algonquin Indians, which are from the Great Lakes area, helped to name the full moons. Lewis and Clark type things, you know what I'm talking about? Um, so they called it the sturgeon moon because there were more sturgeon, which is a type of fish, in the lakes at this time of year. But it's also called the full green corn moon, the blueberry moon, or the grain moon. And when we celebrate it as Lunasa, it is more about the grain, um, but also blueberry pie. So there's a very big correlation. Um, one of the things that you need to be doing at this time, especially with the moon being in Aquarius, is enjoy life. Take some time for you. Take some time to meditate, run barefoot in the park, watch a guilty secret TV show. We all have those, etc. Just deepen your connections and take some time for you. Now on the job front, um, right now it's going to be hard to focus because we're going to be reevaluating because it's the end of the summer and we're going, do I really want to do this? Do I hate my job enough, you know, to quit or do I love my job enough to stay or what have you? And that's what this is time is going on in our life. So first of all, I went ahead and just pulled a card for us as a group. And the card I got was a magician. Now, the magician says, you have everything at your disposal. You have the wands, the swords, the cups, the pentacles. You have everything you need to make it through. Um, so, I feel like that's saying that you know and I know deep inside of ourselves what we need to be doing at this time. Um, what whether it's learning something or just meditating or sleeping on our side because our back is messed up or whatever. Listen to yourself and get in touch with your guides. They will be more than happy to share that with you. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I did tonight is, okay, I, I work with several gods and goddesses, as most witches do. And one of the goddesses I really like is Morrigan. <clears throat> Morrigan is a triple goddess. She's a Celtic goddess. And she's made up of three sisters. There was Maka, Nyman, and Bav. Now, of course, her spelling is not at all like what you would think, so don't worry about that part. Um, and I have an altar here in my house to her. <laughs> And one of the things that I do periodically is I'll give her a sacrifice. I know you're going, sacrifice? Oh, my gosh. Well, no. When I went to the liquor store tonight and bought myself a bottle of wine, I bought her one of those little itty-bitty bottles, and I will pour it in a shot glass for her, 
and that is my and in a few days I will pour it onto the earth and that's my sacrifice and then whether you just believe in God or you believe in a pantheon of gods you can sacrifice something to your God um, if you're celebrating the Christian God you might say okay God I'm gonna give 10% of my whatever I make this month now I know a lot of Christians do that on the regular anyway but that can be a sacrifice. Or you can say, I'm going to buy you a little shot. So, but um, that might be something you want to do if you're struggling. You might, whatever your concept of God is, do a small sacrifice. I'm not talking about anything tacky. I'm talking about something that you give up that you value. Because we all have things we value. First of all, I value the shot itself and I value the money I spent on it um, so when I give it to the Morrigan there is a total value there now um, I don't want you to go out and buy something crappy because then there's no sacrifice but give of something of your value remember in the Old Testament <clears throat> you were supposed to give of your first fruits and it was supposed to be a sacrifice of your first fruits of the animals, first fruit of the grains, etc. Um, in fact, <clears throat> the firstborn son was redeemed by giving something in the temple. That's what happened with Jesus. So if you're a Christian, it's this is not so far off for you to say, okay, well, I'm going to sacrifice something. Um, it doesn't mean your literal sacrifice, because obviously you weren't going around killing your okra. But you might say, you know, I really love okra. Here's some for you. Or you might give that okra to a um, beggar on the street. In fact, that's a sacrifice. When you're giving to the beggar, that is a sacrifice. When you're giving at church, that's a sacrifice. So um, I bought Morgan a sacrifice today. Um, and you might spend this time just as it's the full grain and we're celebrating our what we've earned and gotten this year to celebrate, give something back to God or your goddess or whomever you work with. Um, and that's just a thought. Um, you could give something, if you know someone who's struggling for money, or you know someone who has a GoFundMe that really needs some help, you might just give them something. That's a sacrifice. You're giving something of value in their name or in their whatever. Um, when a Catholic lights a candle to a saint, that's a sacrifice. So it doesn't have to be something untoward. You can just choose to give up something. My daughter called me last week, one of my daughters. And she said, what are you doing, Mom? And I said, oh, I'm sacrificing to one of my goddesses. And she was like, what are you sacrificing? And I said, well, since it's a Celtic goddess, I figured she'd like some whiskey, so I just gave her a shot. And she was like, oh, okay, gotcha. So this time, this is the time to... Thank the God or the goddess for what you have, for your first fruits. This is a time to celebrate your family and your friends and to build on those relationships. And this is a time to spend some time with you. So use this time, this full moon time, from the beginning to the next full moon, to do those things. To celebrate what you've received this year. Even though it may not seem as like as much, you have received things. Celebrate that by sacrificing. Once again, a sacrifice can be giving a quarter to someone who's flying a sign. It doesn't have to be sackcloth and ashes. Um, and then call your family. Call your friends. Work on those relationships. This is a time for that. And finally, more than anything, work on the relationship with yourself. Spend some time with you doing something just for you.
Namaste, y'all. I will see you next week at the tarot reading, I hope. <clears throat> and if not, I'll see you at the next full moon. Bye.